In this video, we're going to explain the equations that are used in shear design of reinforced concrete beams. My name is Tyler Lay, and I am a concrete kook. Yep, and I make these videos because I want to help you learn more about concrete. I want to teach students, people in the industry, anyone interested more about a material that I'm obsessed with, concrete. The basic shear design equation was actually explained in a previous video. I'm going to link to it below. It's where I introduce shear design and reinforced concrete. We have V sub C, which is the strength of the concrete, and we have V sub S, which is the strength of the shear stirrups. We add those together and we get the shear capacity. V sub C. Now there's lots of equations in, in the building code. There's lots of equations that have been derived to try to determine the contribution of the concrete to the shear strength. This is a very simple one, but a very widely used one. So let's go with it. Two times the square root of F prime C times BWD. It's very conservative. B is the width of the beam. D is this distance from the compression fiber to the centroid of the tension steel. Now, this is an empirical equation. We just use 2 root f prime c bwd. Now, if I go to find the contribution from the shear stirrups, v sub s, I'm gonna use this equation, a v f v n. A v is the area of a stirrup, the area of one stirrup. F v is the stress inside the stirrup, and we're going to assume it's at yield 60 ksi. And N is the number of stirrups that cross the crack. How are we going to figure this stuff out? Let's talk about it. Let's start out with AV. If we think about one of these stirrups, and if we look at it in a different perspective, if we look at it as if my eye is here looking down the beam, this is what we would see. And if that beam is going to fracture, if it's going to break right here, if it's going to fail, then it's gonna to have to cause this bar to break in those two places. Not just one place, two places. It looks like in this image, there's only one bar right there. But if we look at it in the other direction, there's actually two. Because of that, if we are using a number four bar, which it's pretty common to use a number four or a number three bar for your shear stirrups, we're gonna calculate it like this. The area 0.4 multiplied by the number of times the bar would have to break, which would be 2. This would be 0.8 inches squared. Again, this is the area of one bar, one number 4. In this case, let's say in my cross section, I was using two stirrups. Let's say I break them apart, this one and this one. I may do that to get more shear capacity. To, if this is going to break, again, if it was on this cross section, then I would have to break it in four places. One, two, three, four. Therefore, my AV would be 0.4 times 4, or 1.6 inches squared. Now I know my AV. I know what my stress is. Let's find how many bars there are. We need to find the number of stirrups that cross this crack. And this is gonna depend on the geometry of the crack and also the stirrup spacing. What am I talking about? Well, if you recall, S is the spacing of the stirrups. D is this height from the compression fiber to the centroid of the tension steel. And L, L is this distance from the start to the end of the crack. So if I wanna know the number of bars, N would be the number of stirrups that end up crossing this crack, I would just need to know what my L is divided by my S. My total length of this crack divided by how many, what the spacing is there. That would tell me how many bars. That's kind of complicated. What angle should this be? And I'm not even sure when I begin what my spacing of my bars are. How do I do this? Well, I'm gonna make an assumption. If I notice, I could draw a line from here to here and it's probably about 45 degrees. That's said in another way. The crack, I can envision it happening like this. If I do that, that would make my L equal to my D. That would make my L approximately equal to my D. They'd be at least very, very, very close. That would make my number of bars be my D divided by my S. Therefore, if I plug in everything, 
I get my equation. I take AV, I've already told you how to find that. I have FV, that's FY. And N would now be, be D divided by S. So I plug in here, and now I know my V sub C, two ref prime C, B, W, D. I know my V sub S, A, V, F, Y, D over S. And I have my capacity in shear of my reinforced concrete beam. Now this works great when cracks can be assumed to be close to 45 degrees. But if they're steeper than that, for example, if I have a deep beam where my crack would be much, much, much larger than that, that's when we have something called an A over D ratio of about one. This doesn't work. If I have a corbel or a joint or a dapped girder or a girder with a hole in it, this doesn't work. And we need something else called a strut and tie model. And I'm not gonna talk about it in this video, maybe in the future. Thanks for watching this. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments and please subscribe to this video if you like it and I'll make more. Take care everybody, bye.